So this is can goes all the way over here and this is can as well and I have two can ports here. Hmm. The question is will I be able to connect this battery via CAN bus to the servo as well as the Zeplos Mason batteries with the CAN cable to the servo. Because both BMSs work by themselves if I use the Type A cable from Victron. But I wonder because it's a CAN bus, the servo should be able to communicate to both BMSs and they should both be showing up in the VRM in the remote console. I know we can set only one BMS as the battery monitor and this is the point of truth in our system. I'll tell you more about this later, but I want to try to connect two different batteries via CAN bus to the servo. So this is the main task tonight. It is, it is 9.30 p.m. and we are starting a new project here in the off-grid garage in sunny hot Australia. Welcome back guys. So, um, because I have only one of these type A cables here, we need to make another one. Shouldn't be too hard because Victron has published the pin configuration of the type A cable here. And we just need these three wires inside. And I already have a Cat 5e cable here, which I will sacrifice for that. And we are going to, well, we just need to swap these uh, three wires and then it should work. Okay, let's confirm, let's confirm the Victron cable first and um, see if this matches what they are saying on the website. So I've clamped here both cables into the vise, so I've got my hands free to measure. And um, here we can see this is the battery BMS CAN type A cable. This goes to the battery side and the other side goes into the Victron VE CAN. So there you can see the labels at the, at the bottom here of the picture. This is the Victron side and the other one is the, BR, is the battery side. So Victron and battery. So Victron number three is battery number six. Got my multimeter here. And I made two wires and I used a plier to squeeze the end of the cable, make it really flat. So it fits in between these contacts here. So Victron number three, which is number three, this side or the other side? One, two, three. Should be one, two, three, four, five, six. There's nothing. Yeah, it beeps, yeah. Okay, must be this side. One, two, three is number six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. Perfect. Okay, that works. So pin number one is on this side and then we go pin number eight is on the other side. Okay, there was the first one. Victron eight is battery five. Victron eight, so that's the last one, is number five. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, there it is. And then Victron 7 is number 4. 7 is one further this way. 1, 2, 3. Perfect. Okay, so that's very straightforward. Ah, uh, come on, focus. Focus here. Exactly. So, here we can... Um, I need something. Uh, where's my little screwdriver? Come on, focus. Okay, so what we have here... Um, we've got four pairs of cables in here, so eight cores. And you can see the green one, the blue one, the orange one, and the brown one. And left of them is a white one. But the white one has also a green stripe, a blue stripe, an orange stripe, and a brown stripe. So you can actually identify the white ones paired with the colored ones. So what we need to do now is, this is pin number one and pin number eight. As per the Victron stuff. So this is the Victron side, a V, and the other one is B for BMS or battery. Yeah, so identified. We just need to go number three, um, Victron side is number one, two, three. This is the white, blue, goes to number six, battery side. One, two, three, four, five, 
six is the orange one. So these two will need to be connected. So what we are going to do is um, probably leave like 200 millimeters or something and cut this here very carefully. More on this side. You don't want to really cut, otherwise you cut into the thin cables inside already. Okay, here we go. And then we take another piece of maybe over here somewhere. So it gives us enough access to splice these cables again. Okay, so and here you can see the pairs. Every color has a white neighbor, a white partner. And the white cables, they usually have a, a color coding on there as well. So you can actually identify. See here the white one at the top is green as well on one side. Okay, so what did we say? Number three, one, two, three is the blue white one. The blue white one. Here's our blue pair and the white one and cut the white one. Okay, so this is our Victron side incoming and this goes to the battery. So this white one, number three, needs now to be connected to the orange one on this side, which is going out. So here at the same, probably a bit further this way, so I can solder them together. We cut the orange wire there we go. And now we need to solder the white one and the orange one together here. And then we have our pin number three to pin number six connected on the other side. There we go. Oh, let's see if I can get this on camera here. It's very, <laughs> very hard to focus on these thin wires. And the camera is shaking as well. Then we've got our white and orange one yeah I was expecting that okay that's all we need we just want to confirm what we have just done here okay I have just uh, tested our cable and it didn't work so mm, orange is of course orange on the battery side but the white one which is connected to the blue one here is not pin number three. This is actually pin number one, two, three, four. This is actually pin number five, what we have. And I found this, um, of course, a bit of Googling. Forget about everything what I have told you. The color code is dependent on which standard you are following. There are two different standards, of course. Holy crap, eh? For the color code of um, CAT5 cables. So what we have is the white green one and the green one. And then I thought the next white one is belonging to the blue one, but that's not the case. So blue and white blue are in the middle. This is the white orange one, which belongs to orange. So this pair is just stupid. Okay, so we have to find the other white one and then we connect pin number three. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, well, it is what it is. <laughs> Okay, so let's check this one out now. So pin number, let's see if it works. Yep, yeah, beeps. Pin number one, two, three. Should be pin number six on this side. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect, I got it. Okay, you have to be very careful with these color codes. Okay, I'll do the other two as well and, and then we have another look. So number number eight is the brown one on this side and number five is one, two, three, four, five. This is the blue white one we had before. So brown on the Victron side and white blue on the battery side. And the last one is pin number seven to pin number four. So pin number seven is white brown and number four is one, two, three, four, the blue one. So white brown, Victron to blue battery.
Okay, that's done. Let's check it out. Okay, Victron 8 is the last one and battery number 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ah, it beeps. Yay! Victron 7 is number 4 in the battery. 1, 2, 3, 4. There it is. Okay, that's uh, pretty much everything we need to do, I guess. Just put the heat shrink over these solder areas, but I'm not uh, shrinking it right now. Just want to test it before we actually get ready. Uh, Victron goes into the Victron. If I could get it in. Okay, now it's in. And B goes in the BMS or battery. Okay, it's in. Let's have a look. If our self-made cable actually works. Okay, here comes. Yay, we've got data. 59%? Ah, yeah, I know why. Okay, now that's all good. Okay, let's pull the cable and see if this disappears. Just as a, as a test. Yeah, disappears. Nice. Okay, the SPAT calibration center. And this one shouldn't show any data. No, battery is nothing because we haven't plugged in the cable. So let's try again. I actually didn't put the terminator in it, it still worked. And the battery in here. Let's see. Okay, it's in. There, there's our data. Perfect, nice. All working. Okay, so now I have plugged in the original blue cable again into our Sepplers battery and we've got data and now here comes the big test. What happens if I plug in another of these cables in the second port of the servo, which is the BMS can, if I would get it in. Who built this shitty Powerball so close here? I, I can't believe it. Okay, all good, it's all good. So let's connect this one to our joiner. This is the battery, goes into the joiner, which connects to the other battery. Okay, so here's our remote console. This is the Seplos BMS we are seeing here. Uh, maybe not, maybe look at this. It's going up 51 and 59. These are the two BMSs now connected to one Seplos. Okay, let's have a look in the configuration. What can we see? That's the Seplos BMS. Is there another device? No, not at the moment. Because they are both communicating with 500 kilobit per second. There's our Lynx shunt. And there's the Seplos BMS. I don't think this is actually the Seplos BMS. It just is called C plus BMS, but look at this, 51, 59. It reads both information. I'll just pull the one from the other battery here. Okay, now only the C plus battery is connected and it's all good. So as soon as I plug the other one in, it freaks out. Okay, it's plugged in again. Yeah, 51. Yeah, see, it measures different temperatures as well. 31 in the Seplos and 27 here in the other battery. Ah, uh, bummer. Okay, this didn't work. I, I wasn't sure if this works, actually. Yeah, you can see the parameters changing. Other battery, Seplos battery. Other battery, Seplos battery. Okay, this confused the system completely now. Let's have a look at the system setup. The CAN bus. So is there another one showing up? Or is it just under the same name and that's and that's why it flips between the two BMSs now? I thought there might be another one showing up, but that's not the case, obviously. That's what I was hoping for. But nope. Syst no, battery measurements. Let's go in here. Now, it's just the Lynx shunt and the Seplos BMS. 
but there's not a third one, not a third BMS in here. Ah, damn it. Okay, it was a test. Now we know how to make such a type A cable for Victron systems. And we also know you cannot connect two different BMSs to one Victron servo via CAN, at least. That's not working. <laughs> Damn it. Look at this tool explosion here, just for cutting and soldering three wires. <laughs> okay, guys, so far this video from another successful, unsuccessful build here in the off-grid garage. <laughs> Well, there was a bit of a fail. I was really hoping to have multiple BMSs showing in the Victron system via CAN. Um, I know it works when you use um, RS485 then, but um, I wanted to try the CAN option as well. But now we know it's not working. Because as I have shown you before, you can actually set this one here to visible. And when you go back into the VIM, it will show up down here in a second. So this is our Seplos BMS. And if this sucker here wants to... Uh, we are not live. Ah, there it is, there it is. See, the link shunt shows up here. And there's another space. So I was hoping for the other BMS to show up here. But, um... Uh, I'll figure something out. Okay, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your great support here on the channel. Until the next video, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you this 10 to 11. Shit, that took me like one and a half hours to cut three wires. Thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye. I probably won't use this one again ever. What the f... Ah, that's wrong. This one goes here. This one goes here, 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 and here.